Ви на каналі Anywhere Club, я Олексій, до мене прийшов Віталік. В чому прикол, коротше, зараз перше, що ви маєте знати, інтерв'ю в нас буде англійською. Чому? Тому що Віталік українську свідчиться, а ще, а ще не до кінця. І так як ми познайомилися на Донбасі років 25-30 назад, то типу, ми колись обидва говорили російською. Віталік досі ще свідчиться з російською на українську, але щоб зробити це інтерв'ю, ми вирішили, що було на нашому каналі все чотенько, будемо говорити англійською. Тому я буду сьогодні вчитись нормальною англійською мовою, а Віталік собі розказувати, що, що де як. Чого чо я покликав Віталія? А він зараз про себе розкаже, але по суті це людина з величезним досвідом, яка переїхала в Америку і має досвід, типу там за бугром, по нашим поняттям десь за океаном, я хочу попитати, що, що там, чи є якась різниця, як відбувався процес, Короче, купа таких от деталей, як воно було переїжджати, і чи відрізняється чимось айтішка, тому що в нас в голові от є Україна, а є якась там Америка, і там якась айтішка, вона особлива. От я хочу дізнатися Віталіка, чи вона особлива. Я хотів якось дуже гарно сказати про те, що це дуже парадоксально. Ми познайомились в місті Сіверськ, Донецької області років 30 назад. І зараз, діпа, я взагалі не уявляю, як це. В Україні війна, там, де ми познайомились, міста вже майже нема, воно просто щент розвалене, воно досі українське, але ну, типу, його майже немає. Все там стерто, нафіг. Е- і ми оце зараз діпа, говоримо про айтішку. Я з України, Віталік з Америки. Типа, прикольно, як склалась доля і наша, як окремих людей, і світу. Це прямо розвал башки. А... <клес> так, hello, Віталій. Thank you. Thank you for inviting, first of all. Yes, I'll, I'll try to switch back and forth. And, uh... But, you know, we'll find the language anyways. Like, I know you, you know me. And uh, I'm glad we kind of, uh, we had a luxury to connect. Probably, like, When was that? Before the war, like one year, two years before, uh, we met at the um, airport. Remember, you just yeah. stopped, you stopped by? Yeah, in Borispol. This yeah. was so yeah. crazy. That was crazy. Like, I, I was just reach out. I don't remember, like, what we're talking about. I think I reached out to you prior to that, maybe a few months or something. We just chat. And then I'm, hey, I'm flying. And you're like, oh, I'll stop by just to say hi. And I was with my wife and kid. And you're just like, Oh, hey, what's up? And after like 20 years or like 20 something, like you said, we finally met each other again. And um, yeah, that was, first of all, for me, that was a lot. That means a lot, right? Um, I don't know if you still in connect with, with anyone from, from, from our little like group from, from a childhood. Are you still in connect? Yeah. Are you still talking to no anyone? One. No one. No one. So it's just us, bro. <laughs> it's just us. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah this is crazy unfortunately, unfortunately those stuff you know going on yesterday it was like two years and uh you know it's all kind of sad and uh i wish i were i were there because i was we, we tried to travel like every i don't know every other like four or five months so basically in the summer and the winter time we travel to ukraine families you know friends So we, we tried to spend time there. Now it's been two years since we just, we can't go there. We can't see our friends and families. Obviously we took our families here. They live with us. They just, they go back and stuff like that. But it's not, it's not the same, you know, like it's not like we're missing Ukraine. That's, that's the thing. Even after eight years living here, we frequently, we're constantly going back, you know, it just, uh, I think it's, it's an age uh thing you know for our kids they don't need that they just like why we have to travel why we why we have to fly like 15 hours <laughs> like for them it's just crazy for us i guess we feel better over there other than just here because you know most of our life we spent there so i feel like it's just uh just like the age thing I didn't think that we should we could start from that. This is sounds so sad. I feel like I would like to cry a little <laughs> bit. It's not the, I, no man, I understand. I'm just my idea was to talk about the IT scab, blah blah blah. But 
Yeah. yeah, but we can't. We can't this just. Keep that part. No, 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 no. I'm, I like we. <clears throat> we totally should talk about that. It's uh, it's something that we should always remember now and take into account because it's part of our life and uh, the war and the nations all the time. So this is something we should think talk about. And this is the point. Like basically on this channel, I think it's first time where we talk so much about that it's always about i'm always talking about an it and not the, the like because it it's like obvious and and that's all but so i i like that we talked about it and this is really um interesting part like one of the reasons i think we're talking about it it's our childhood it came from uh, like donetsk region yeah so this was the huge yeah. part yeah. yeah, I was going there each, like, till 13, I was going each summer to my grandmother's, grandfather's. Whew. Okay, man, um, why, why, yeah, tell me, like, really, really, uh, like, in a short way, like, about your experience, like, why I decided to ask you, I know why, but I want people to know why. I'm an IT developer myself, I studying, you know, IT stuff in, in the university, I then start my uh, professional career in 2007. Um, this is when I start making some, you know, first buck, first money in, in IT. Um, since there, uh, since 2007, uh, I worked for a couple agencies in Ukraine, and then I understood that hey, um, I can make more money if I go and, and start working on, you know, some U.S. companies. I always uh, have that thought. I always, uh, and even, dude, that's that's the funniest thing. I never studied the, the the language, like the English, right? I never had like classes or whatsoever. I studied German in, at school, and and you know when I went to university, I, it's like I need English. I don't care. Like I need to get it somehow. And that was um, a long story short. Again, I'm, I'm I'm gonna tell you like the whole my my life story right now. No. <laughs> So, yeah, I knew that knowing the language opens up um, kind of a new doors and um, I study it and then I start taking a first kind of a projects, remote projects, you know, this um, freelance platforms or something. And um, my first client, I can't even chat with, with them. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh, hi, my name is, you know, and um, yeah, but after maybe a few months of practice, I pick up real quick. I start um, having some friends start chatting with them in English. And then, uh, yeah, next thing you know, I'm working for the um, New York digital agency. And I work for one digital agency, second digital agency. I start uh, being something more than just a, a developer. I was a team leader. And then I found this third New York agency that New York agency that said, hey, can you build up a team for us um, we want you to have you as a more like a CTO and um, I built an office in Ukraine for 60 plus 70 plus people um, set up processes set up procedures um, we went from zero basically to huge production office and then they took me uh, to US so I live in New York five years working with uh, Fortune 100, Fortune 500 clients, uh, meeting their CMO, CEOs, selling products of a company. And um, yeah, this is this is how it's all kind of started from being just a developer. And next thing you know, you're in New York as a CTO. And um, yeah, that's kind of a journey. How yeah. many how, how many people was when you uh, relocated to, well, when you became a CTO, how many people was in the company? Oof. probably at that time. Um, so I've been as uh, more like a, as a devil. Just understand the scale. Just understand the scale. Just uh, like 100, 100 plus, 500. 100 plus. No, 100 plus. We always kind of thinking that we go more than that, like 500 plus. But it's it's uh, it's a different animal. Like after 100 or after 500. I think it's it's hard to first of all to find that many projects. It was hard for us to to scale like that, and um, it was easy to easier, much easier to manage when you kind of a hundred people. You know, you're more flexible. 
in the, we stay in a niche like uh, mid size businesses to a, to a large size businesses, but we found our niche and it was not about scale anymore. It was more about like uh, going inside and efficiency, right? We um, optimize our processes, optimize technologies and like work. Okay. Build, build up the value inside. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's all about like uh, how the resources more, more efficient, less bugs and stuff like that. Cool. This is crazy. How did you how did you find this first client in the US? Like, is it can I do that? Like, can I what 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 should I do from Ukraine? Like, I know that it's not for juniors, maybe, but the senior guy, uh, like I have glass door on my phone. It's not it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, how, I, I think this actually happens. So you talk about like just being as a freelancer more, right? Not or as a like get hired by the company as a contractor or more like a freelance thing. What do, what are you what are you talking? So oh, you know, um, yeah, back to you. Question is like where? To yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, from my perspective, freelance is totally different um, story. Like. This is different stream of understanding. Um, I'm talking about the like contractor. The, the, okay. Okay. Um, I, I, okay. So I working on Jaja. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. So, uh, let me give you that. Right now, it's much much easier than let's say ten years ago. It's much much easier. All you got to do is obviously know the language, because if you don't know the language. How you're gonna communicate with the with the rest of the team, right? So if it's U.S. or um, even Euro company, they speak most of them. They speak um, <clears throat> in English, right? Inside a inside a team, you don't have to speak maybe, but you have to be able to chat. And again, you can use tools. I, I, when I started, I use a uh, Google Translator, to be honest, because I didn't know the language, so I'm just like copy and paste, copy and paste constantly. It's and it's um, working. But 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 what the what what the like? Okay, I know language. What then? Like, what is um, what is the way? I should uh, I should message companies in LinkedIn. Like, why do they want to hire the person from Ukraine? Uh, I know that now it's like seventy percent. We will not do that because of the war and risks, or fifty percent. Okay. But anyway, someone would like to because the prices is like two, three times cheaper, four times cheaper for, for the for the person if you um, if you take it straight from the market, right? But what is the what is the tools basically? I'm asking like what is the the way? Okay, what, what do you can use to go there? So first of yeah. all, yeah, uh, let's start easy. First of all, LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn is it's always there. Uh, recruiters, um, even like a, you know, sourcing guys and girls, they they looking at your LinkedIn profile because it gives you a powerful tool for as a recruiter. It gives you a powerful tool to search, filter, you know, and and uh, they have a lot of criteria to find you. So I would say, you know, clean it up. There's a bunch of YouTube videos to to how to do that stuff, and um, know know what you want because. I think in U.S. you have to know exactly what role you, you know. In Ukraine, you can apply for different roles with the same resume. I feel like it, you know, but still, you'll be questioned about it. In U.S., um, they will they'll not even like talk to you if they see you don't have enough experience or they catch something on your re resume, like even LinkedIn page that they say like, "Oh, this dude was a uh, front end." Uh, engineer and now he wants uh, to do a back end for example I don't know it's like I guess the wrong example but st starting with the LinkedIn clean up cl clean up your profile and then there's a bunch of other websites um, like uh, not a glass door to be honest with you glass door nobody's using glass door glass door is, <laughs> is more for the company to read about the company it's more like is this a, a shitty company are they paying their employees? Are they uh, who? Who's their CEO? Is he has a score and stuff like that? Or what's their salaries? Because Glassdoor is uh, specifically they're, they're like collecting salaries, and you can by register you can kind of look at, at the salaries and understand. Um, so LinkedIn, I told you that. Then um, 
I don't know, man, in my practice, you can get even hired by the U.S. company on uh, freelance platforms like um, like Upwork, you know. Uh, so it, I, would, I would do the profile there as well, because most of the time how it started, um, the U.S. company looking for a contractor, they know they don't need a W-2 employee. W-2, it's like a full time when you work in U.S., live in U.S., and you have a W-2. It's just like a form of uh of employment and then a contractor could be anyone and they're not going to give a most important project to the con to a contractor because it's kind of a risk to your point mm -hmm. but you can start slow you can start like hourly supporting some of their projects right because the company producing stuff but then they supporting what they, whatever they produce so you can get in kind of taking that route the starting slow uh, getting hired by um, as a contractor by Upwork as a freelancer and over some time you know they say like oh this dude is or girl is is good you know they they do good stuff let let's let's give it get him full-time kind of on a contract so let them specifically work for us who we'll take all of your time and pay this is what happened to me by the way so I started as a freelancer on one of those platforms and then some guy he found me, he said like, Hey, can you do work just for me? And I'm like, yeah, who are you? And he's like, I'm, you know, we are a small digital agency and we're hiring people like yourself all around the, the world. Right. And, um, yeah, can you, you want to work just for us? And I'm like, yeah, just, you know, pay me 2000, $3,000 or whatsoever. Like, I don't remember the number and I'll be just, you know, work, working just for you. I'm fine. Um, so yeah, I would, I would say there's different routes and, um, right now it's easier, but also right now it's not the best market. Like we should understand that as well. I is, is a little suffering, but we'll talk about this later. Did, did I answer your question? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, um, I don't think that we could talk about it later because like everyone knows that market is shit right now. So it's like. It's okay. Like what the, the, the one funny thing that I heard about the recruiter on the one of the interviews, she said like she, she was working mostly on the European like market and her comment was really nice. Uh, um, she said like, yeah, market is shitty, but guys, Europe always were hiring for like during one or two months or three months, people were looking for a new job for a few months. I'm sorry that 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 you have like in ukraine you have this two week switch from work to work but it's it wasn't normal like it was normal for ukraine totally but it wasn't normal for the whole markets and now in ukraine when you are like senior guy and you're looking for a job for one month or maybe two it's okay it's it's yeah you you you, you don't use you didn't used to it yeah but it's definitely that yeah but, but it's it's definitely the the, the reality that was in the Europe, like always. And so, the, and this is nice. I, I think it's something positive stuff to understand that. Yeah, it was really crazy. Like maybe this is the normal. And the times that we have the post COVID times when you could get 30% rise and change the job in one week, it, this one wasn't normal. And maybe we shouldn't compare to, to that time. Yeah, you should and then it's okay. You step back and look overall. Uh, on the market, you know, how it's grow over years. So you cannot judge by the this exact moment or last year only. You should look at five years at least and see like, because it's like, uh, you know, it's like a Bitcoin, it grow, grow and grow and so go down and then it's more <laughs> back again. Like, uh, we just follow the same, it's, uh, yeah, you have to just narrow, like go back or more like look from, um, from a higher perspective, from a higher level, what's going on. But, if we look at the short time period of time, like let's say starting end of a last year, maybe summer of a last year to this point, I have a lot of friends in the US who, you know, struggle like a lot to find a, a nice job because what happens is they have a lot of people out there on the market, you know, big players, they fired all these like tens of thousands of people and then you know, there's a lot of great, great talent out there, you know, and what what the company's doing, what the recruiters doing, they're like, I'm going to interview 
20 people or 50 people and pick the greatest out of the greatest. So they're really like cool dudes and girls, you know, like they, they work for five years at, at Google or, you know, other companies and uh, Netflix or whatsoever, like call, call them out, like Fang group. And then, um, yeah, Facebook. And, and uh, so now I can interview 20 people, pick the greatest, give them the same salary that I would pay. I don't know, maybe like a mid-level um, and get a senior. You know what I mean? And they do in that. So I, and um, my friends are experienced that they, they get one interview, second, third. Uh, and then on the last one, let's say, oh, you know, we pick another candidate or something. So, and then like just start, start all, all over again. And it's hard here. You have to, you have to prepare. I feel like a lot, you know, you have to, uh, basically it's like a job to find a job. <laughs> you know, it's like a separate job because if you are still working and you're looking for another job, it's hard, but it's, it's crazy to stay without a job during these times because you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your mortgage or car and, and all that. And if you without a job and it takes four months to find another one, you got to make sure you have something, right? Like, uh, because yeah, it's, it's crazy. And, and this is the, uh, this is the reality. Um, I don't know, this is just us or just Ukraine, but yeah. No, I think, I think it's all over. Maybe uh, in India, this is now it's uh, it's okay. As as far as far as I know, that that uh, hiring there is happening actively. But uh, yeah, but like it's salaries are different. Everything is different. Okay. Um, this the 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 question I had uh, like uh, it's it's not straight. I like there is no it's it's the complex one but we have this we always I think had this have this feeling not everyone but a lot of people in Ukraine that there is some special world US especially um Silicon Valley yeah I'm uh, yeah I'm, this is shame that you are not from the Silicon Valley but anyway you are close enough <laughs> I'll tell you sorry I'll tell you my story why I'm not there yeah uh, that, like that, that um, I'm just wanted to talk about this myth that um, working with the ex taxi driver or like some switcher we, we, in Ukraine, mostly they call switchers. The person I'm a switcher. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was a marketing manager, and I was 24, and then I'm switched to the QA uh, engineer, and I'm that guy basically. Like. I'm, I have a technical um, high school, but it's like I'm not a technical person at all. So, and there is a lot of such guys, and we have a lot of them. And I think there is some myth that working in Ukraine and all this with those people, they, they are not maybe not real. They're like they're not this Stanford guys, you know. So the what I'm trying to to ask, like, what is the reality? Like, at least that, that you're definitely closer to that. Like, are there a real difference? And what is the difference? And should we really feel ourselves as like um, lower class? I don't know how to say it right to be politically right. But I think I'm already uh, did some wrong stuff to people. But anyway, you said like, a lot of. You better stop there. You just <laughs> yeah, yeah, stop over. digging. Stop digging. Yeah, I, okay. I, I got a question. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I that's for later. But I understand your question, and then I want to just say something that you mentioned, like about the switchers. I I can only say that in Ukraine, there's a lot of smart people. A lot. That's why we kind of have a, a very strong IT in Ukraine. Um, you know, and I've been working with so many different teams in so many different countries. I'm not going to say like they're stupid or something, you know, they're not, uh, but I'm always coming back to Ukraine. Maybe that's me because of my roots, but I always coming back to Ukrainian developers or, or even like close countries. But to your point, switchers, it's, it has it, its own place to be in Ukraine because people are 
not only smart, they willing to spend an extra time to compensate that lack of, uh, of experience. So I'll give you an example. I have friends of mine working five, 10 years at the um, factories or, you know, different kind of job at all. And they just over a year or two, they switch entirely, like completely um, by not sleeping at night, studying, right? Like when we have a goal, like Ukrainian people, when we have a goal, we just do everything is possible to reach that goal. And we have a lot of successful cases. My friends, you as an example, a lot of uh, other people. So it makes it, it makes a lot of sense for me to be that switcher. Yeah. <laughs> So now talking about the myths, um, listen, it is different to see from Ukraine, uh, look at, at, at United States and being here, or even like come to visit to United States. Have you ever been in States, by the way, you visited? Yeah. Yeah. When okay. I was, when I was 20 for three months, the work and travel, yeah, I yeah, was so in Massachusetts cleaning supermarket. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look, listen this is already like you you will understand me when i when i'm saying this because most people they come to visit like they dream about this uh you know united states and and stuff like that they silicon wallet they come to visit they spend a week maybe two weeks max maybe a month here and they like oh everything is so great everything's so great but then when you stay here and live for at least like you know half a year a year this is totally different. So I think this is where you have to be prepared mentally that it's not the same thing as you watch the movies or see the pictures. It's it's a little different. I don't want to say it's bad. I want to say just it is different. When when the the bills hit you hard and you know and especially when you like there's a difference when you alone or you with the family because it's also a huge factor. When you're alone, you can reach the stars. You can do anything, right? You can jump in a, in a, uh, on a plane, sleep in a, in a sleeping bag you know, or, or, or on someone's couch, on friend's couch, and that's it, you know, not eat. So it's very different. So I would say young people, like youngsters, switchers from Ukraine that don't have a lot of uh, responsibilities, I think this is the place to be. Um, definitely in US, you have more opportunities. And this is, hey, this is why I live here, right? I'm not gonna say like, you know, this is a shitty country and, and I'm staying and I'm staying here and live here. I see the opportunities. I see the opportunities for for young generation. I don't want to talk about like other stuff that's going on politics shit, but if we talk about IT, right? Just focusing on IT, it is place to be. It is place to be because of the investment um, investments institution that the way they do here, how they invest, how they um, with their experience pump the new business to the to the point like it could be a next uh, unicorn and stuff like that. So it is more work here than the other I don't know place in the world because if you go to Silicon, I've been in Silicon Valley multiple times. Uh, when I came to New York, after two years, I said to my wife, listen, New York is great, but we go into Silicon Valley <laughs> because I have this dream. Like I need to see it. I need to be there. This is the greatest thing. We went there and then we go like we went to San Francisco, right? This is huge uh, IT, also like capital and Silicon Valley is just like across the uh, the mountains, right? It's, it's just like right there. And um, I went there, we, we kind of faced a lot of issues with uh, how people like live there, how much everything is so expensive, right? How um, it's just like, even from New York, going there and saying things are expensive, it's kind of weird sound, right? New York should be like the most expensive place, but no, because, because of a, those high salaries because of all these like uh, big players um, having their headquarters offices there and they just throwing and pumping you know the market with their salaries and everything all the uh, real estate the houses everything is costs a lot of money people cannot afford it even like 
an IT guys with the salaries two hundred thousand dollars a you know a year plus we're talking about right two hundred thousand plus not afford their own living they have to rent stuff they have to share spaces so for me that was yes you can make a lot of money you can be close to that you can but you know you still you have to think um, what's going to be next for the experience for the growth professionally um even like starting a startup if you have your own business this is a place to be no brainer like for the um let's say are you want to stay there and live the the entire life over there grow your kids you know uh, buy a house and stuff like that i don't know people tend to move out after some time you know people tend to move out I want to stop you. I, I, I'm, I'm, I see that it's going like really deep in the about the life, and going back for the myth, for the, <laughs> going back to the myth, like yeah, yes. that, I understood that. That's like it, it totally makes sense. If you want to become like greatest, it's better to be be like when you have greatest all over you. Oh, I don't know, not all over. I don't know how to say it. Like uh, around you, and it's it makes sense definitely. But um, um like did you feel like those guys have really like they are a cool professionals and all of that i'm just this is about this myth that i'm trying to understand like are there something that you like um i definitely was in different teams in ukraine and not in in ukraine in indian teams in um, cross-cultural teams it's always depends on people not on, on the country um but from my perspective most of ukrainians was really cool they were hard working they were responsible they understood what is ownership and they were delivering stuff and most of the guys from different teams like this it's, it's not representative data yeah it's my it's only my experience but uh, from my perspective there was less cool people that i met uh cross function or at least same yeah so it's not like there's something wrong with uh, with those people all of them are cool and there's some really cool guy from us and at the same time some just okay guys from us that i met that they they were not just like okay they was just the workers who just want to be like lay down wait when something will happen <laughs> and so they're not like top notch you're not working with some geniuses and that. so the, the the question is more about like that do you feel that there are some i know that market basically building these people yeah but the, the difference is huge or it's just it's okay like you it's it's not a big deal uh, we're working with a team from ukraine or from silicon valley so first thing first there's much more people in silicon valley like or you know, no, let me go back. Back to what I was saying, Ukrainian people, it's just like, I guess, because of my personal attachment to them and your personal attachment to them, it's easier for us to work with the Ukrainian team because you understand, you understand the, you know, on, on, a, on a personal deep level, what the values they care about, what the, you know, because you grow there. So I feel I experienced that myself a lot working with also like multicultural like diverse teams across like i work with um latin america teams i what we work with the european teams i even work with china teams you know teams from china everyone is different and what do you what i experience myself it's hard to understand them first it's hard to understand what they value the most what they appreciate you know our people they appreciate when you say like something at least like you know you did a great job you know hey that's a cool thing you know you did there or hey you, you know you kind of appreciate a little bit and that's what we need that's what we're looking for we're looking for a lot of appreciation and, and we needed that as a as a human being everyone needs that um so i guess other values like we have and care about is like a families and and you know there's a lot of i don't want to go too deep from 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 your question is i start understanding that maybe after five or six years being here in us that 
people are different <laughs> and, and and values are different and there there are great people you can find anywhere in the world as a as a leader you know as a leader like yourself building a team you have to be like you have to just focus on 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 like they do on a, like they work on a project you you look how they work you understand how they work you understand what they value the most and then you start putting those pieces together thinking that okay this guy I put with working with this guy because after working with so many different peoples from different countries you kind of understand how they operate you know indian guys for example they they hard working people indian Pakistan, they hardworking people. They very similar to to Ukraine, right? Ukrainian people, uh, but they need a lot of uh, hand holding. Not a hand holding, I should say, a, a lot of like attention just to watch some uh, what they're doing. Because if you kind of say uh, to to them, "Hey, do this thing," without giving too much specifics or details or explaining to that Ukrainian people, they come to you and start asking questions. Okay. I can do this in five or ten different ways. Which one you want me to do? Because you can do this, you can do that. Because they're thinking, they're like Indian guys or like Pakistan. My teams that I work with, they will just, uh, hey, why should I go and ask all these like stupid questions? I can think and decide what is the best way I think I can do, and they will do it. And there might be a different, you know, it might be a good thing and it might be a bad thing. It might be a good thing when you need a quick some solution and you don't care about the um, the way it's done, right? This is working just fine. But it might be a situation where you need to know all these details and you don't give it to them, expecting they will come back and ask some some more questions. Or maybe that was a like a rush task you didn't explain it well, but they will do it and they will have to redo it because you say like, oh no, like we need to do something different that makes sense you 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 following yeah yeah yeah. so and knowing knowing those nuances of of everyone kind of uh how they work and how how they operate yeah it helps you a lot because then you can explain to um to your team members what to expect or to your manager what to expect so by hiring those people you you like you, you know what to expect but I already forgot the initial question. So, what was? Uh, is it better? No, I, I think I look. I, I I think I had the answer. So, okay. the, like, yeah. it's it's the the question is wrong. So, yeah, uh, the, que- the question <laughs> is wrong because it sounds like who is the best guys in the world by nation? This is shit. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is wrong question. So, but but the answer is. So the question was wrong, but the answer is, guys, you are okay. Everyone is okay. I am okay. Everyone is okay. Everywhere people are okay. They are different. It it depends. I like that uh, meaning from one of the books about about the the sex, by the way. But but the, but the, um, but this I like that, and I think it's here as well. Difference between the class is more than uh, different be- between averages of the classes. So if we take the guys from India, Ukraine and Silicon Valley and take the average guy for from, I don't know, any of the measurements, uh, uh, like, I don't know, um, some performance. And we take the, the average guy. So the difference between those average people will be less than the difference between the less efficient guy of Ukraine and the most efficient guy in Ukraine. And same for the India, same from the Silicon Valley. So just the question is wrong. But the, and, and the answer as well is this myth is bullshit. So if you hear something that you are not good enough because you are a switcher or Ukrainian or not from Stanford, I don't know, whatever, this is just uh, the wrong statement. Just don't, I don't know, listen yeah. to the person or like, this is just, just, uh, yeah, I, just I, wanna, I, I like the answer. I want to add something to that. <laughs> who, who do you think work in Silicon Valley? Who do you yeah, think? Yeah, Ukrainians, uh, national, guys from Silicon India, Valley. Pakistan. Yeah. Everyone, exactly. So they're, they're, oh, they're, and they're, 
they get hired and it's hard to judge because they have a uh, 10 different nationalities working under the same kind of uh, team you know you have a team 10 people all different nationalities what the difference is they've been giving a better um what's the call environment created for them right it's all about environment so basically have the same person put it to um <clears throat> i don't know some uh, not experienced team or not experienced investor who didn't launch any previous businesses and you know put it there and take the same guy and put it to uh investor uh, company or, or or the guys who built uh, to the team guys who built 10 or 20 different startups that went to a uh, billion dollars evaluation the same guy where he gets more experience where he pick up a lot of stuff what tools the same guy will have in two different teams you know what i mean so environment that is created there it's not about how cool you are or how it's just about create that perfect environment where if you go there you learn a lot of quick like you learn quicker quicker you learn you um get a lot of practice you learn from your bodies like a team bodies from investors from you learning like it's kind of a you know it's a quick path it's like a get get um that experience let's say you you're not going to be able to get it in ukraine that's the thing unless you know we start like we have a lot of kind of investors in ukraine they're starting a lot of businesses that initially like initially they kick it uh, to the certain level but you cannot pass beyond that level just being from ukraine you need like some support you need some larger investor invest into your business so it's it's very rare that businesses just started in Ukraine will go like to international kind of level with a ton shed of money that people will just put into it. It's it's more frequent that from that environment in Silicon Valley, even like a smaller project have more chances to go and, and get investments and you know hire a team and, and build up your your dream basically. I feel like that's just again back to to two to, to things I want to just uh, mention. Back to your question, where is a better team? Everywhere, we're all the same. You know, we just placed in a different situation in different environments that will increase our chances for success. Yeah, <sighs> this was uh, this was sweet. <laughs> uh, so people. Uh, it's not about people, it's more about the environment. Okay, but I don't want the people who are listening to us to hear that like in Ukraine there is no startups or something. Oh, there, there's just less of them. But we have really cool startups. Uh, we do. We as, do. as far as I know. It's just, they have, it's not just ton, tons of them. And at the same time, I think this is about the environment. This is really a huge problem in, uh, in Silicon Valley to get the job. So you should be really in, in, like if you're a junior maybe now i know the market is, is really uh, complicated not complicated but yeah how to say it uh, anyway uh it's really hard to to find the job but at the same time i think in silicon valley now for junior and me even even the covid times it wasn't the chance so you just need to be really a uh, really cool guy to get the job there at the same time i mean that it's it's not like like when we're talking about the environment the it's not just the environment for some seeds that go in somewhere you need to be the really good plant like in ukraine you can be a seed in the in silicon valley you should be a plant already yeah. it's yeah. it's <laughs> you cannot go there when you see it it's not working that way <laughs> so i i also want to give us a couple good advices for people who are listening to this or will listen and um thinking that you're not gonna get any help like if you just try to go there to silicon valley get hired and everything you're thinking i'm alone nobody's gonna help me i can like i should do it all the way myself i know a lot of examples our guys like ukrainian you know like mo multiple nations that they help each other basically you can find a groups you can find a channels that our, our guys are already working on the thing uh, companies 
and they can give you a recommendation. They can help you with the interviews. I know a lot of examples, even from my previous company that we had, you know, you know in Ukraine, I have some of my friends that found those groups and they help them to get hired, basically. So, you know, for, for the hiring process is a little different. Questions may be different, like who, who, who they, like what they're asked. So my point is don't, uh, like, don't forget about networking. So networking is a huge thing, right? You know the guy who knows the guy who knows the girl uh, that works there. And through that connection, through that networking, you may you might get a lot of information from, from inside a team that you're trying to get hired by. And then they will help you, basically. It's, it's all over the place. I know, you know a lot of examples, like I said, even... Um, even recently with, with the team members that I work with, they came to US, they didn't have a job, they from like project manager, for example, I'm giving you a girl, she's a project manager, uh, her husband get a job or something, they move in, and then she struggled to find job herself, but she found those groups, and through that group, people help her to get hired, you know? So don't, don't forget about networking. I know, you know, for the IT, um, it's, it's less common, I think, you know, it's more like, um, you, you go there, you work on your station, um, but you have to be like, you, you talk to your, co uh, you know, coworkers, um, but don't forget to talk to the same team members or like yourself working for that company that you are trying to get hired by, because they are your like kind of, um, a booster or something they can help you to hard and and don't don't just be afraid to ask like hey i know you work in there like even on linkedin you know just go there find the profile you see the you know ukrainian guy or girl and you just you don't know where to start and you're like hey i saw you 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 work at this xyz company and i'm trying to find you know my, my job or something could you are you be able to help me? Like if you have time, you know, just be polite, be, be friendly, just ask for, for help and you, you'll, you will get help a lot. You know, it's, it happens every time. So it's, don't be afraid, try to network, try to ask questions uh, because we we're trying to do everything ourselves. We're trying to put it on our shoulders and go there and like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I don't know how I want to watch it. So I think I think because we have this shame for this uh, kumovstvo, I yeah. don't know how to translate it. So the, what like in US it's okay to, to be this like uh, how do you call it uh, when you manage Network. these connections? How networking, networking? Yeah. So networking is a part of the culture, and in Ukraine same. It's about part of the culture, but at the same time it's part of some or culture with some negative uh, face for some reason. And uh, that's why I think people are really shy to do that. And I, I, I know that like I have a friend from Canada and he just wrote to some really senior director guy who didn't he, he didn't know him. He's not Ukrainian even. He just uh, some guy from the company that he's working right now. And the company is huge, like thousands of people. And he said, like, hey, man, we're working on the same company. My wife is looking for a job. Can you help? And and and, and he answered, like, yeah, sure. Why not? And and his wife got the job so it's like it you you cannot imagine this question in ukraine when i was listening to that i was like oh this is so smart and simple but you're yeah. not you're not do making it in ukraine first i i think this is the, like this cultural reason for that this shame of the of the nation i don't know okay man yeah. uh we need we need to finish i let's um I like we had only like two questions this is the the um i think the conversation was really great and uh, really deep i liked it this was really cool but at the same time i i had but i had only one question basically that i wanted to ask and i asked it did you wanted to share something did you like you was going here and regardless over like just to support what we talk about um i i want to add that regardless what situation you're in um and you know you can't find a job or like you look in just keep doing it i i feel like um 
by constantly like putting some time and effort, it's it's inevitable to to succeed. And、um, I know it might be tough right now, but overall, like we said, over years, the IT is growing, the IT is booming. Yes, like there's a lot of conversations. Oh, ChatGPT will take our jobs, or like some AI. Or like, I I feel like. Even like I spoke to a, a big sales sales team, sales managers, and I'm like, "Hey, do you think that CMS will die? Like in particular, like talk about like a WordPress or like some other like you know tools that we've been using、uh, before? Our ChatGPT will just kick us out, kick you out of a business." And he's like, "Nah, it's not going to happen next like five to ten years." So it cool tools, it helpers, but IT is still growing. IT is booming. It's a it's a big big industry, and if you're planning to go there, all you need is just to be you know put in some time and effort.、Um, ask friends, ask like people like we just spoke about like someone who already doing that.、Um, ask for advice. Find your mentor. Find if you know kind of people you follow, and it's it's possible. Everything is possible, and there's still、uh, you know a lot of.、Um, Opportunities in in that niche, so yeah, I would just like I want to say like keep pushing, keep pushing, guys, and、uh, everything will be alright. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it was it was fine or weak. Similar, yeah. But I'm going to finish the recording.